Hello there. Lorraine is still recovering at home, so I'm back here uh, to talk you through the next hour. We've got loads to get through, and we're going to start this morning, actually, uh, by talking about Shamima Begum. She's on one of the front pages, certainly, this morning. Her bid to regain UK citizenship rejected. You'll remember, of course, that she did leave the country to join Islamic State when she was just 15. Uh, joining me now to discuss some of the big news stories of the day, Lewis Goodall, one of the hosts of the News Agents podcast and LBC's uh, Sangeeta Maas. Good morning to both of you. Morning. I morning. think that quite a few people might have been surprised that this was revoked because it seemed that the mood music was she was 15... And the way we think about 15-year-old girls in this country now, about grooming and so on, has changed, hasn't it? We think, actually, could she have known what she was doing? But the judge has decided, actually, she's still a threat to UK security. Well, well it's, it's interesting. Isn't it? What the judge has really said is that, yes, it's entirely possible that she was trafficked. Yes, the UK government and <coughs> authorities may have, therefore, let her down, not fulfilled mm. their obligations, but, ultimately... This was a choice for the Home Secretary at the yeah. time, Sajid Javid, and still retains... It's still the choice of the current Home Secretary, Suella Bravman. So, really, her fate is in Suella Bravman's hands, not the judges. And, frankly, I think she's going to be waiting a long time for Suella Bravman to change her mind. Essentially, what the, what the judge in this case was saying is that the Home Secretary acted lawfully yeah. back in 2015 yeah. and would continue to act lawfully, Suella Bravman, if she decides to uh, keep... Uh, sorry, keep hold of the citizenship that she's now taken away from... And that's from based on the fact that, Shemima. regardless of the reasons why she went and... What, she, they, they, the Home Secretary currently still believes that if she came back, she could be a threat to national security. Yes, yeah, so that's that still... The integrity of the decision-making is based on that, is it? So, Sajid Javid at the time, back in 2015, had said, and I'm paraphrasing here, essentially says, look, if the public could see the security information that I have seen, they would yeah. make the same decision. In other words, she poses such a great threat to national security that we cannot have Shamima Begin back in this country. Well, it's interesting because you do a radio show and you both talk to members of the public all the time. We've done a... Um, we've had chatted to some members of the public about this. Just take a listen. It's interesting what you say there, that if they knew what the Home Secretary says that they know, they might make a different view of it. Uh, Tyler West went out to see what people are saying about this. Do you think it's unfair that Shamima Begum shouldn't be allowed back in the UK? Ooh, good one. <sighs> Not sure. She knew what she was doing when she... Uh went over there. At the end of the day, she is a, a person and I think everyone deserves a second chance. She should be allowed back in the UK so she can be tried for whatever she's done wrong. But when you look at what's happened to her, she's been groomed. I feel sorry for her, but at the same time, we've got to make the streets safe. Very, very simple, OK? She was a child. There should be allowances for, for how old she was. It's fascinating, isn't it? The sort of level of sympathy that there appears to be among the public. But briefly, they're not going to give up the fight, are they? They're not. So her lawyers have said that there are two more sets of appeals that they can go to. But can I just say, the interesting thing about those boxes, I think when you hear people saying she was groomed, she was a child, I think that that's indicative of how public opinion has moved since 2015. We now know so much more about how young people mm. interact with the internet, how they are vulnerable, how they can be groomed, how someone can take psychological control of them, and trafficking, the methods by mm. which people are moved, smuggled from one country to another, in order to be exploited. And I think that's why you're seeing so many people feel so much more sympathetic. I think it's also indicative of the fact, briefly, that actually, IS and ISIS, which was, you know, the big story mm. of that time, 2015, 16, 17, etc., mm. it sort of receded from the public consciousness. Yeah. I mean, this was a horrendous death cult. And, of course, she did have agency, she did have choice when mm. she joined them. I think, though, the gentleman there raised the, the per pertinent point. She should be brought back to face justice for what right. she's done, rather than losing her citizenship. Well, so this isn't the, the end of the way. story, is it? So there no, will be more to come on this. Yeah. So let's move on to something else, actually. It's on the front of the mail this morning. Um, a way to deal with the huge backlog of all these 149,000 people who are waiting to hear on their asylum cases. There's an idea now that you might just be able to fast-track something 12,000 of them from certain countries. It's controversial, though, of course, Lewis. It's sort of controversial in both directions. So, look, people... I think sometimes people don't appreciate that if you're on the asylum waiting list, list if you like, you're waiting for your claim to be processed, you can spend years on that process. The system currently is totally broken. Mm. The Home Office system is just not fit for purpose. During that time, if you're an asylum seeker, refugee, whatever you want to call them, 
you know, you can't work, can't access benefits, you've basically got a small sort of government, you know, stipend, it's a tiny amount of money, you know, 30, 40 quid a week, etc. Um, and the fact is, if no action is done, you will just find more and more people just waiting, languishing, and you end up, where do you end up? In hotels. And we've seen... Paid by the taxpayer. And I was in Rotherham at the weekend at one of these, you know, far-right protests mm. where they are becoming a centre of local discontent. And, you know, one way that you can stop that being a problem is speeding up their asylum uh, claim and either but to do it without the workforce but, so, or but there's them. another way to speed up the asylum claim yeah. so the underlying structural problems with the immigration appeals process or application process is this tens of thousands of unfilled vacancies within the home office what the government really needs to be doing is employing more people with more experience who are able to properly adjudicate these claims move them through quickly the issue with um, transferring to just a 10-page form is this. How do you authenticate what people are ticking off to right, be Right, because they might say they're from Afghanistan, Eritrea, is it Libya? Yeah. yeah. Well, there could be um, security uh, problems. Afghanistan, Syria. Uh, Afghanistan, Eritrea, Libya, Syria, Yemen. Now the so without of... interview, 12,000 could be potentially given freedom to live here. Yeah. Now, the reason those countries have been chosen is because currently 95% of applications from people from th these countries are granted asylum. Yes. So it does, on, on the face of it, actually seems quite sensible, doesn't it? I think the devil is going to be in the detail of this story. So will this 10-page application tick, bo tick box thing which, by the way, will also involve criminal checks, because we know that criminal record checks are essential, yeah. that will be integral to it. But is this going to decide their application claims or is it just one step that's been speeded up? And that yeah. we don't know yet. The fact is, this is one of Rishi Sunak's pledges. This is what he it said was. he was yeah. going to do. So to some extent, and the suspicion will be from people who are sceptical about it and also pro-asylum seeker refugee, that basically he's just doing this in order to try... To get to the numbers. He's, to the numbers he's done the awful thing that politicians do. You work backwards. Set yourself but a number and try and swim towards it, exactly. no matter but what. But the system but does he, need reform. But if he doesn't meet those figures, he will lose control of his party, because this has become a central issue, immigration. Right, and we've got an election potentially on the horizon, and if Next it year. looks like the numbers are coming down, that might go in his yeah. favour.